Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Valheim and I'm bringing you all of the shields in the game ranked. You could also call it top 9. Whatever it's going to be, we're going to be going from worst to best, all the shields in the game. So let's just dive on in. So there's two things to consider with shields. There are basically two different kinds of shields. You have small circular shields and then larger tower style shields. And basically the difference is the small shields you can use to parry, the other ones you cannot parry with. So if your fighting style is just a static block, then you're gonna to wanna to go with the tower shields. If your style includes parrying and, you know, quicker moving combat, that style of stuff, then you're probably gonna to wanna to use the smaller shields. So that's really the biggest distinction because I see a lot of people asking, should I use the tower shield or the round shield? Well, it really depends on your fighting style. If you're going to be parrying, then the round shield. If not, tower shield. So let's just dive on in and start off with number nine. So number nine or the ninth best, or in other words, the worst shield in the game is the standard circular wooden shield. So all of the shields on this list will be rated based on their level three stats. So, I mean, it wouldn't change the rating, but to get these numbers, you need to have the shield at level 3. Uh, this one is a simple wooden shield, as you can see. It has a block power of 30, a parry force of 20, and a durability of 300. To make this one, you're going to need wood, resin, and leather scraps. So that is number 9. So at number 8, we have the wood tower shield. So as you can see, it's a much larger shield. It's square. It basically covers your whole, or rectangle, it covers your whole body and doesn't look quite as nice as the other one, in my opinion. But that is that shield. So this one, it says a rough but heavy wooden shield. This one has a block power of 45 and a durability of 300. As I said, you can't parry with this one, so it doesn't have a parry force. This one, you need wood and leather scraps to make. So cut down a tree and kill yourself some boars and you'll be able to make this shield. So that's number eight. Let's move on to number seven. So at number seven, we have this teeny tiny little shield. As you can see, it is clearly a buckler. And this one is the bronze buckler. This one says a shield of burnished bronze. Good to turn a blade or two. So obviously they're not bragging about its durability. This one has a block power of 55, making it 10 points higher than the wood tower shield. Has a parry force of 30, giving it 10 extra parry points over the wooden shield, which makes sense considering it's nice and small. And a durability of 300. So this one is pretty durable. To make this one, you need wood and bronze. So to get bronze, you have to kill the first boss, which is the Ike You'll get from him an antler, which you can use to make a pickaxe, which you can use to co mine copper and tin in the black forest and smelt bronze. Once you've done that, you'll be able to make the bronze buckler. This is definitely a good uh, shield to pair with swords if you're going for a quick moving uh, hack and slash and parrying build. So I definitely use the buckler quite a bit. So that is number seven. Let's move on to number six. So here at number six, we have another one that I use quite a bit, the banded shield. So this one is your stereotypical viking-ish style looking round shield so uh this one says banded with hoops of iron a true warrior's companion now that's not technically accurate because in history you wouldn't actually put an iron band around a shield like that because the idea was that you wanted to catch a sword you didn't want it to glance off and possibly hit you uh plus iron was expensive and not a lot of people would be using it for the regular shield so oftentimes you would actually have leather around the edge of it if you had anything so fun historical fact but this one has stats of a block power of 70, so we've got 15 points better than the bronze buckler. Parry force of 50, so you can actually parry with this one despite it being a rather large shield. And a durability of 300, making it, you know, just as durable as the other ones. This one, to make, you need fine wood and iron. So for fine wood, you need to have a better axe, either a bronze or an iron axe, which you can cut down birch or oak trees with, and you'll get fine wood. And to get iron, you're going to need to kill the second boss, which is the Elder of the Forest, from whom you will get a Swamp Key, which you can use to get into Swamp Catacombs, and mine iron inside them, which you'll get in big oozy junk piles that block the passageways. And you'll mine those, you'll get iron, smelt it down, and you'll be able to make iron things, including this shield. So that's number six, let's move on to number five. So at number five, we have the next logical iteration, which is the Iron Tower Shield. So I think this one looks really cool. It's probably my favorite looking tower shield in the game. This one says a tall shield of strong iron, which is accurate. Uh, this one has a block power of 85, so 15 points better than the banded shield, and a durability of 300, so the durability remains constant. To make this one, you also need iron and fine wood. So, same process as the previous shield. But that's number five, let's move on to number four. So at number four, we have probably my favorite shield in the game, the silver shield, and it's got that uh, late Greek slash Egyptian kind of style look to it where it's got the cutouts inside. I really just like how it looks. Plus, it's got that uh, 
I, I just like it. It's, it's very good. So this one says a shield of radiant silver. This one has a black power of 85, so the same as the previous one, but you can parry with this one, and it has a parry force of 50, making it on par parry-wise with the banded shield, and a durability of 300. Now, to make this one, you need fine wood, like the two previous sh uh, shields, but you also need silver. And to get silver, you need to kill the third boss in this game, which is the bone mass. From him, you'll get a wishbone, which you can use to find rare veins of ore, and you'll be able to mine silver and make silver stuff. So that's how you get the silver shield. It's definitely a very good one. Like I said, probably my favorite in the game, uh, with one minor exception. So that's number four. Let's move on to number three. So at number three, we have the Serpent Scale Shield. And this one is the, like I said in the last one, there was like a minor exception for my favorite shield. And it's this one, because this one is the only kite shield in the game. And I love kite shields. Very cool shield style. So this one says a sturdy shield of overlapping scales. As far as stats go, this one moves us up to 100 for block power. So 15 points better than the silver shield and the iron tower shield. And has a durability of 350, giving it the highest durability out of any shield. So this one's definitely a lot of fun. To make this one you need iron and fine wood and so we've already discussed how to get those but you also need serpent scales. So to get this obviously you're going to need to kill serpents. So it's not one that a lot of people will actually come across because you actually have to go looking for a serpent if you want to kill it. It's not something you're going to stumble across on accident, at least not usually. It's usually typically a late game shield but like I said it uh, is easily one of my favorites. It's right up there with the Silver Shield. I love this one. So if you're going for anything kind of like mid to late medieval style, this one's going to be the way to go because it's the only Kite Shield. So that's number three. Let's move on to number two. So at number two, we have the Black Metal Shield. And just look at it. It's very, very cool. Interesting looking. It's got some chains on it. And it's definitely got two types of metal. So that's very cool. Description says, fashioned from the strongest metal, able to turn even the deadliest blades. And that's pretty accurate because this is a super strong shield. This one has a black power of 100, so it's the same as the Serpent Scale Shield there. Uh, but this one you can parry with, and it has a parry force of 60, giving it the best parry force out of any shield on this list. It also has a durability of 300, making it not as durable as the Serpent Scale Shield, but still very durable. This one is definitely a late game weapon. Uh, you need black metal to make it. Actually, you need fine wood, black metal, and chains. Out of those, the hardest one to get is probably black metal, and for that you need to go to a plains biome, which is anything that's tan, and you can see we're actually in one right now, but any of these tan spots are plains biomes, and you need to kill fullings. They're these little green orc looking guys and despite being small and not very scary looking they're pretty deadly they do a lot of damage and they take a decent amount of damage to kill so that's how you get black metal scrap which can be smelted down and made into black metal ingots and you're going to need that to make the shield so that's number two the second best let's move on to the best shield in the game so at number one we have the black metal tower shield so this one is going to be made out of the same materials as the previous one fine wood black metal and chains this one's description just says a tower shield of gleaming dark metal and that's accurate so this one has a black power of 115, so 15 points better than the black metal shield or the serpent shield, and a durability of 300. So this one definitely gives you the best black. Now, when it comes down to actually which one's going to be the best, so there's several times where your black power is either the same or very, very close, and it's going to come down to between a small circular shield and a tower shield. So like I said at the beginning of the video, between those, which one is actually the best is going to depend how you fight. If you just hold the block and block it, take the blow, and then go back to attacking, then the tower shield is better for you. If you're going to actually be parrying, which is going to include, you know, making sure that your timing is on par, then the, I find that the small circular shields are better. But in any case, that is all nine of the shields in the game ranked. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.